Welcome everyone to Rewind Recap Relive, where legends and rising stars meet. I'm your host Jonah, and what a great interview we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed The Natural, Sam Beal, coming on with Mr. No Days Off, Fred Rosser, formerly Darren Young in the WWE. We talk Nexus, we talk why is he the natural, what makes him the natural, Sam Beal. We talk primetime players, Bob Backlund. So many fun stories come up in this interview, and of course, so much advice from Fred to the natural Sam Beal. So you're in store for a great interview today. But first, let's get into next week's episode and of course plug that Undertaker giveaway a little bit more. Next week's episode is truly incredible. And yes, I am saying that alluding to the guest we have on being just incredible. ECW legend, former World Heavyweight Champion, Tag Team Champion, Hardcore Champion, wrestling legend all around just incredible he is coming on with sabotage sean logan we just got done wrapping up the filming for that as i'm filming this intro so it's really cool i'm it's still fresh in my mind i'm telling you you're gonna love it that is next thursday enjoy it and of course next week on that episode we will also be announcing the winner for the undertaker pop figures Listen, I love this giveaway so much. I'm so happy that so many of you have entered so far. And if you are watching this video now, go to the channel. I will link the video above right now and in the description box below that you have to comment on to enter and win one of two pop figures. There could be two winners. Your chances are great. Incredible chances, great odds if you ask me, okay? So go enter that giveaway right now, Undertaker giveaway. You'll see the rules and on how to enter in that video, of course, to commemorate the long-lasting career of the dead man. So please go enter that. Winner is announced next week on Sean Logan and Just Incredibles episode. It's going to be great. Maybe it'll be you. Enter now. We have taken care of everything. Look at that. We're done with time to spare. Just in time for you to watch the interview, uh, like the channel, like the, uh, well, yeah, of course, like the channel, but like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it around with all of your lovely wrestling friends. Even if they don't like wrestling, show them the video. They'll like it because of this video. It's great. All of our interviews, go check them out. Make sure you hit the notification bell, ding, 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 so you don't miss a thing here on Rewind, Recap, Relay. But most of all, please enjoy the natural Sam Beal and Fred Rosser. See you soon. So our first guest comes to us from Rossford, Ohio. He's got four years in the business, mainly around the Midwest area, but one of his goals is to wrestle in all 50 states, so he'll be coming to you soon. Please welcome the natural Sam Beal. Hi, how's it going? Thank you for having me here. I'm excited. Of course. Um, and our next guest uh, made his name known in WWE as Darren Young. He is a veteran of WWE. Um, please welcome former WWE Tag Team Champion, primetime player, Mr. No Days Off, Fred Rosser. Mr. No Days Off, Fred Rosser is in the house, and veteran is the key word with me. Veteran, not former. I don't like the word former. Former sounds washed up, so uh, you said it right. WWE veteran is in the house. I always say don't die with the story and you tell it, so thanks for having me on. Of course, of course. Um, and I always like to start at the beginning. So please, Sam, if you could take us away and tell us how you began your road down professional wrestling. Um, so like most of us, we uh, start out as a fan. And I did back when I was a, a little kid with my brother uh, playing the Nintendo 64, uh, the Stone Cold Steve Austin days. We, I would watch it with him and it was an awesome time. But as we all do, we all kind of grow out of it a little bit when uh, I did from like uh, probably like the middle of elementary school all the way to about freshman year of high school. And <clears throat> that's when I started picking it back up again. I was watching it religiously. I loved it. I never really thought of it as like a future or like a career as uh, they would say right. um, until about my freshman year of college when I was uh, at work cutting grass for my high school in Rossford and I was watching a documentary about Seth Rollins when he uh, bro, uh, tore out his knee and blew that out and they were like doing the uh, the backyard wrestling on the trampoline in Iowa and I was like man I used to do this in high school this is exactly what I want to do and I just I got to it I looked up a little school here in Toledo and it wasn't the greatest of schools to go to or start off at but it got my foot in the door. It got me to meet my trainer, who is my trainer now. Yeah. And 
ever. I've been hitting the ground and I'm running. That's, that's the goal. I'm really passionate about it. Uh, I eat, sleep, breathe. I live wrestling. Everything I do has to be something about wrestling. I'm thinking about it. Uh, I just, I just want it. Simply. <laughs> right. And no, and we could definitely tell, um, and Fred, so your journey, is it similar to Sam's at all? Yeah, uh, Sam and I's journey are quite similar. I did the backyard wrestling uh, right out of high school and into college. Um, uh, the one thing that's different about Sam and I is that um, I've always um, I've always been a fan. I never took breaks off. I was just so uh, it, it was something I wanted to do. I've been a fan since I came out my mom's womb in 1983. <laughs> No, no breaks for me. Uh, my last, my last sentence in my high school yearbook was WWF at the time. Here I come. So I was very focused. There was no, there was no plan B for me. Well, actually, the plan B was if I didn't get signed with WWE May fourth, two thousand nine, out of seventy five guys and girls from all over the world, a four day tryout. I beat them all out. If I didn't get that uh, win at the tryout, I mean, I would have been a firefighter. So uh, I was number okay. three on the list. Um, so um, my dreams came true, May 4th, 2009. And uh, I'm pretty good with dates. September 11th, 2002 will be 18 years. Plus, I've been rocking and rolling. And um, I always say the best is yet to come for Mr. No Days Off. And I just turned 37, November 2nd. And Happy uh, birthday. I'm like, Thank you very much. I say I'm like wine. I age gracefully with time and I've got so much left to offer uh, to the wrestling world because I do more than just wrestle. Uh, I'm an advocate for equality and, uh, right. you know, putting a stop to bigotry and hatred, but we can go on and on about me. Uh, but some of my favorite wrestlers growing up, the guys that got me hooked were Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Jake Roberts, uh, yeah, those guys, you know, really uh, got me into it, you know, along with my dad, who was a huge fan of wrestling. But it was the guys like Shawn Michaels and Ricky Steamboat that I really studied. And as a kid and a teenager, uh, I didn't know how to put it into words, but I always watched them because uh, they had me believe they they were the underdog. They were like Rocky Balboa, just, you know, fighting from up underneath. And I always loved the underdog. In you know, in high school, in middle school, I was that guy that would have his head rammed into the locker, but I wouldn't really, I wouldn't hurt myself, but I would always listen to the people, the mm -hmm. kids, oh, oh, or I'd flip over the uh, lunch table. Uh, I take like a Mick Foley bump over the lunch table <laughs> because I always love like the kids and the, the crowd. Reaction. Oh, oh, and I would never hurt myself because I just knew how to land, but everyone else thought it was vicious. And even still to this day, when I perform, you know, I want to, everyone knows that it's entertainment, but I yeah. always want to bring that believability back. So 18 years in the business, I always listen to the people when I can hear someone in the front front row say, Oh, wow, wow, that looked real. Oh, wow, man, I think he's pissed off. That means that I'm hooking the people. I'm having them believe, but I'm sorry. Uh, I can go on and on and <laughs> ramble on, but... Um, no, it's great yeah. stuff, though. Yeah, I love that. Really well said. Um, that's a great mentality to have, to listen to the people. And Sam, so to head it over to you now and getting into your training, you mentioned that the first school you went to wasn't the, the greatest place, but it got the job done, right? So can you tell us a little bit about that experience for you? Uh, well, like I said, it was, it was, it was a step in the door. That's the way, best yeah. way I could put it. Um, I'm actually currently still training to this day because I feel like we're always learning something new with wrestling and in life, really. But right now I'm at um, a place called Skull and Bones here in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, the head trainers are uh, CK3 or Crimson. And then um, yeah. Trey Miguel is on impact. Um, I'm, I'm learning a lot from both of them. They have both taken me like a gigantic step from what I was before I joined back to the school. Um, talking about the original place where I trained CK three was actually our first trainer that like helped me develop myself as like the fundamentals and having practice matches and things like that. 
Uh, and then some things happened where the school and him kind of butted heads a little bit and they had to go their different ways. But then CK3 or Crimson opened up his own school, which is Skull and Bones. And like I said, I'm taking a gigantic step forward in every aspect, selling, moves, like in ring, like steps, character work, everything that I can do to get better. And they're, they're helping me sell it. It's, I can't thank them enough for everything they've done for me so far. Absolutely. Fred, do you have any advice in terms of training on what to kind of hone in on when, when you're in those formative years of, of your career? Well, you know, wrestling's like ice cream, all different flavors. Jonah, you might like mint. I might like Rocky Road. Uh, Sam, you might like uh, cookies and cream. It's all ice cream, just different flavors. So it's very important for us to learn it all. I say, learn how to call it in the ring. Learn how to uh, do something that's kind of planned, you know, from A to Z. You got to learn how to do it all. You know, learn learn the strong style. Learn the 80s style. Learn all styles and make it your own. Uh, no one owns anything in wrestling. Every, uh, you know, um, everything's been recycled. Mm -hmm. uh, my finisher, for example, the gut check the fireman's carry, I throw the guy up and he lands yeah. on my knee. Uh, that was the inspiration from uh, NXT's Roderick Strong because back in 2011, we, we were neighbors in Tampa, Florida. So I was always uh, mesmerized by the ROH style and then to have my neighbor be Roger Strong he was almost like a mentor to me we would work out together I just loved his style I studied his work and I just took a little bit from some of my favorites including him and just make it my own so um, you'll get a lot of advice from people uh, in the business that's why I say it's all ice cream just different flavors but yeah. Sam you probably won't get this piece of advice take care of your body. Your body is so important. Your body is what makes you money. At 37 years old, I'm more mindful of my mobility. I'm more mindful of, I don't lift heavy. Everyone thinks, oh, how much do you bench and stuff like that? I don't do any type of heavy benching. I haven't touched a weight since March 15th. It's been all resistance bands, jump ropes, ab wheel, the agility ladder to keep my feet and my hips nice and loose because when you're not in the ring as much, as I used to be full time with WWE, I always used to say, if you don't use it, you lose it. So it's very important for me to, at this stage of my career, mobility, making sure everything is moving right. So definitely, Sam, take care of that body. Thank you so much. It's actually funny that you say that because I've, that's one thing that I have taken a lot of pride in because in high school, back when I first started, I was out of shape. I was like an offensive lineman, per se. I'm not like a smaller guy now, but I've definitely trimmed down a little bit and it's mm -hmm. something I'm still striving for every day, working on myself, making myself better. You know, Sam, Sam I, I would say health is wealth and the business is changing. Uh, it's not like, you know, you don't have to be huge. I always say to guys that are cruiserweights, there's no excuses now. Back in, I hate using, uh, the old timers saying back in the day, but back in the day, you know, the big leagues were looking for guys, six to 300 pounds, big guys. So if someone is five, seven, 150 pounds and saying, Oh, there's no opportunity for me. You know, that's BS because there's so much opportunity out there. So much wrestling out there. And uh, you don't have to be huge like Hercules, you know, you don't have to be huge at the ultimate war, but just look like you work out, look like you take care of yourself. Um, it, you know, it's very important. You don't want to look like your next door neighbor, but again, you know, it's just very important overall appearance. And Fred, so if we could transition out to your first experiences with WWE, were they uh, about 2005? Were you doing dark matches for WWE? Yep. That's exactly why I call myself a veteran because my yeah. journey, I just didn't just, uh, play football and then get signed like a Titus O'Neil or uh, Mojo Mojo. Yeah. Um, it's something that I grinded on the independence from 2002 when I started to 2009 when I got signed with WWE. I started doing extra work with WWE 2003. 2003 
was the first time I actually got okay. to work with WWE, and it was a Survivor Series commercial, uh, 2003. Um, and then from then on, it's just like I developed relationships with guys like Kurt Angle, for example. And uh, oh, wow. I remember, at the, I remember at the time he was doing his uh, his feud with Shawn Michaels, I believe, was 2005, and he was doing the Kurt Angle Invitational. So anytime. WWE was in the Northeast area where I'm originally from. As an extra, I would just show up sometimes. And I wasn't even on the list to be an extra because it was Dr. Tom Pritchard, one of the head trainers at the time that mm -hmm. loved me. And he would always say, you know, anytime they're in the area, just show up. Everyone knows you. If you work, you can get paid. If not, you know, just go there for the experience. So it was a guy like Kurt Angle who, when he was doing the Kurt Angle Invitational, uh, I've done it several times where I hold his gold medals. He trusted me and I would always ask him questions, even if I knew the answer. One question I asked Kurt, and I already knew the answer, and he, I, I asked him at ringside. I said, Kurt, if you, have an amateur, am, if you have an amateur wrestling background, is it good to kind of sprinkle it in, incorporate it into your work? And he said, absolutely. If you have an amateur wrestling background and you can kind of sprinkle it in, it'll set you apart from everyone else. So I knew the answer to that. I just wanted yeah. to get that reassurance from him. So yeah, my journey started with WWE 2003 and on. Wow, that's so cool. And I feel like it's a fact that not a lot of people who've seen your, your main run really know about. So it's interesting to get that um, insight. And then you mentioned Dr. Tom Pritchard. Did you go to uh, FCW? Was that your next step? With And then would you run into Dr. Tom again with that kind of group with... Heath and and I think um, maybe Bray was there and a few others, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. 2002 is when Dr. Tom, the end of 2002, I started September 11, 2002. Dr. Tom had met me probably October, November of uh, 2002. And uh, he just took a liking to me. And over the years, you know, I was very like, oh man, I want it, I want it, I want it. Dr. Tom would always say, just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep doing what you're doing. And, um, you know, there's a saying that goes, if you keep doing the same thing, you get the same results. So I had to lose some weight, tone up a little bit, uh, and just keep getting those reps. Just keep getting those reps. It's very important when you first start to kind of stumble and fall, fall on your face, uh, be put into experiences where you can say, uh, I don't think that's a good idea if I do that again. Mm -hmm. uh, the, more, the more reps, the better. Um, but at this point in my career, I always focus on quality over quantity because Dr. Tom Pritchard has so many analogies that I would use. Everyone has a bump card. You, you know, you beat your body up daily in the ring. It's very important at this stage of my career to just, uh, um, uh, just take care of my body and save those, save those big falls for when they mean something. And um, yeah, Dr. Tom just kept saying, you know, when I first started, sometimes in this business, you're going to have to eat shit like the taste of it. And yeah. I always said to myself, man, what are you talking about, Dr. Tom? That's, <laughs> that, that, that's never going to happen to me. That's, that, that's never going to happen to me. But yeah, that, that's the way the business is. You know, Your future is controlled by a pencil. They can pencil you in and erase you out. So there are going to be times when things aren't fair, but you just have to just suck it up and make 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 the best of your experience with wwe matter and that's what i did and yeah you I'll never, did. yeah you know i've had a great career and anytime someone asks me about vincent man i'll say i'll never say a bad thing about Vincent man because he gave me my last shot with wwe so uh i really enjoyed my memories with wwe and i always cherished them and i'm not on the band list like some people you know i'm still <laughs> invited back sometimes uh recently i think in april i was on their show their internet show the bump you know talking about 10 yeah. years next years so yeah i have great experiences with wwe still of course and um and that feeling uh one last thing on fcw was that the first time you were officially signed to wwe when you were brought into fcw yep. so how did that yep. feel can you tell us about that because i'm sure i mean a dream come true right i mean you had been working for it for since 2002, so that's quite a while, seven years, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it was like my last resort. I had to pay to try out. Now, 
nowadays guys don't have to uh, pay to try out they just get invited to the performance center in orlando and okay. you know whatever happens happens but i actually paid uh, either a thousand dollars or 50, between a thousand and two thousand i always get those numbers mixed up but i paid to do the tryout because they wanted serious people and i remember a four-day try i was like a maniac i was a maniac and i remember it was uh and i was still of course, in the closet. I was still cutting wrestling promos like this to sound more masculine. So I remember John Laurinaitis telling me before the tryout, because I would always go to him and say, man, what do I got to do to be, be a part of the WWE family? And John Laurinaitis, he would say, you know, you know, Darren, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, he wouldn't call me Darren. He would say, Fred, you just got to show me something different. You have all the tools and all that other good stuff. You just got to show me something different. Show me that you have a little personality. Yeah. So I said, all right, all right. So this four day try it with WWE, I remember promo day and I'm like a nervous wreck. And at the time I was doing a Frederick of Hollywood character, fly, flashy, flamboyant, you know, fur coat, everything. And I remember, uh, all, all the writers and the producers being at the, uh, the tryout this one particular day where they went to see character stuff. And I remember sitting there that morning, I'm like, man, should I do it? Should I do it? I had all my stuff in uh, my, my, uh, my rental car. So I remember running out to my rental car, like I was sprinting, sprint. <laughs> it felt like it was slow motion, sprinting. I went to go get my stuff, came back in, had my promo ready when it was time to go. I wowed the people that were in attendance and I hit a home run with my Frederick of Hollywood uh, character type gimmick. And uh, ultimately I got signed May 4th. The same day I got signed was the same day AJ Lee, CM Punk's wife got signed. So she, oh, she so cool. I, I was yeah. from Union City, Union City, New Jersey. I was from Union Township, New Jersey. We both came to the trial uh, together and we got signed ultimately that same day. Wow. That's an amazing story to hear it all come full circle. Sam, so talk to me about uh, your first match. Now we've talked about training. So your first match, how was that? Was there an intimidation factor that was uh, setting in beforehand? Were the nerves going? Can you talk about that? Yeah, actually, my first match was here in Toledo for the, uh, the, the school that I went to originally had a, a company that they ran shows. And it was my it was the first match. It was I think they gave us like five to six, five to seven at the most. And it, it was very nerve wracking because all my family was there and everything. But like before my music hit and before I went out there to the to the ring, I'm sitting there behind the curtain and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, dang, I'm I'm doing this thing. Like, this is a real thing. This is me going out and performing in front of like a paying crowd. Yeah, it was an awesome feeling. And it just made me like think like I'm meant to do this. Like This is what I want. Well, and and it's. It's on YouTube, so it's funny that you bring this up because, like, I think like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I rewatched it, and I'm sitting there like, "Oh, God, who let me wrestle like this?" <laughs> it, it was funny to watch, but yeah, it yeah. was awesome. It was one of my buddies who actually trained at the school with me at the beginning. Uh, his name is Jay, or his name was Johnny Carazzi. Uh, I think his real name is John uh, Chambers, but it was. It was awesome to, you know, actually do it. Like I said, like there's always the back, uh, the backyard wrestling that we've done, and it's like nobody's there watching. It's just like us and our buddies having a good time wrestling, doing what we love. But like this time, it was paying customers. Like they're they're watching me do what I love, and that's something I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Of course, it's so interesting that you just watched it back because I always like to know. Uh, what could you have changed if you could? Is there anything specific or is it just like the overall, like you could just pick certain spots now, now that you've learned more throughout these four years? Oh, I changed the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, it was brutal, but it's actually also kind of funny. Like I said, it was brutal to watch back, but there was two things in there that I saw that I like, I was like, Oh man, that's actually really cool. I need to bring that back. And then there was, uh, and then I like to always, Senton in my matches or in my moves, move set. And I hit that back then. So I was like, oh man, I can see the evolution of how I hit it now and how I hit it back then. But it was really, it was, it was fun. It was cool. It is really cool. Who was it against? Is it, uh, was it against someone you still fight today? Uh, you ever run into them again? 
I think he's out of the business now. Uh, he's he's a Redcon uh, store manager, I believe now. But his name's Johnny Caraz. He was his uh, ring name. Uh, his real name's John Chambers. Okay. Wow. Well, that's awesome that you're able to kind of see that now with the experience that you have. Uh, Fred, can you relate? Is there any? Do you have any advice um, going out to wrestle in front of tens of thousands of people? I'm sure nerves have set in once or twice for you. Or maybe I'm wrong. Could you speak to that? Uh, well, when I got released from WWE uh, a couple days before my birthday, October 2017, uh, I've been doing uh, some of my best work on the independents. Again, yep. quality over quantity. Um, and uh, I always say, you know, whether it's in front of 10 people or 10,000 people, this is still fun for me, you know. Uh, if it's in front of 10 people, I still go 100% because the minute you don't go 100%, that's how you get hurt. So again, whether it's in front of 10 people, 100, uh, 100,000, 10,000, whatever the number is, for me, it's still fun. Yeah. Uh, and for me, after my release, I've had some of my best matches on the uh, independents. One guy in particular, Sean Spears, you know, mm -hmm. the respect to your fans is so important, but the respect to your peers is like the, the icing on the cake for me. Uh, someone like Sean Spears, when you wrestle him and then you come, then he comes back from the curtain and he has his hands on his hips and he's like, man, I needed that. That's, that's the biggest compliment in the world, you know, for him to say that, man, he needed that, that, that ruggedness, that he needed that, uh, that match with me to make it, you know, mean something. And, you know, that's the biggest compliment. That, yeah, seriously, I can't imagine. And then also, uh, I want to compliment you on a match I just saw. Was it with the NWA with um, Eric Redbeard that you had? Oh, yeah. Uh, six, six, eight, 315 pounds. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> I remember working him. Uh, funny story. I remember working him when they first came up on the main roster, the Wyatt family. Yeah. And he's so he's so big, like me, legit. I'm five eleven, five eleven, two thirty. In the wrestling world, I'm six two, two forty. Uh, and I okay. told Eric Redbeard, I said when he first came up on the main roster, "Hey, man, take care of me. I'll do whatever you want in the ring, but just take care of me. Don't hurt me." Uh, and he didn't hurt me, but on live TV. I had baby blue trunks on, which I didn't like wearing with Titus. We had so many different colors, but yeah. these one particular baby blue trunks, and I always share the story with Eric uh, Rowe and Eric Redbeard. He body slammed me so hard on live TV that I sharded my pants. Uh, it wasn't, oh. it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> seen or known on TV, but yeah. the same trunks, I still have them. I could never get the stain out. I washed them so many times. So anytime I do appearances or autograph signings, there are three pair of trunks that I bring and I set on the merchandise table. One pair is when I uh, won the tag team championship titles with Titus. The yeah. second pair is uh, the breast cancer awareness trunks that are pink and really cool looking. And the third are those baby blue trunks that are still soiled because of Eric Rowan and body slamming me so hard. But yeah, I got to share the ring with him. And, um, you know, I and I loved sharing the ring with him because his look, you know, the Wyatt family, I yeah. loved to work with them because of their look. And, they, you know, they you know they look like rednecks and they're <laughs> just so rough and rugged. So distinct, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, just so distinct. And I just love the story. And we were able recently to tell a beautiful story. He tried to, you know, he tried to break my arm too, you know. I know and, because of uh, the, uh, the was it elbow surgery you went in for? Yeah, 2017, I had the Tommy John surgery, which is very uncommon in wrestling, very common in baseball. And I've never, okay. played, a day, I've never played a day of baseball a day in my life, but I was rehabbing like a baseball player. And uh, he tried to attack the arm, you know. I heard this 2017, it's 2020. He tried to break my arm, but... He was disqualified. I advanced on to the tournament uh, this coming week against Chris Dickinson. So I'm not 100%, but I'm still going in there because mama didn't raise no fool and mama didn't raise no punk. <laughs> Absolutely. Sam, have you ever, have you suffered injuries thus far in your career? Uh, well, I don't have wood by me, so I can't knock on it. But <laughs> You better knock on it. You better knock on it. You better find something. You better leave. You, uh, you better pop out the screen. 
pop out and come back in, knock, knock on some wood. I do the same thing. Knock on it, baby. Knock on it. Oh, yeah. I, I just knocked on it. <laughs> good. We're good. As of right now, no, I have not. I mean, I've had some, like, little, like, nagging, like, oh, man, that's sore or this and that because it, right. and you're, like you said, you got to take care of your body. Your body's getting beat up inside the ring. Yeah, I've had some bumps and bruises, but nothing too major as of today. And I thank God for that. But mm -hmm. well, fingers crossed, and I knocked yeah. on wood, so I think we're. Sam, you talked about how uh, you had got back into it when uh, Seth Rollins got hurt. Well, the same injury Seth Rollins had to his knee, I also had in I think 2014. I injured my ACL, MCL, so. Once I injured that, came back from that, the minute Seth went down, uh, I'm pretty sure he probably contacted people that had similar surgery. I was one of them. And he contacted me. He's like, man, Freddie, man, when is this going to get better? Because he had just had surgery. And we were texting for months and months and months. And just I was always checking up on his progress. But yeah, ACL, MCL surgeries, I always say uh, with rehab, the three sets of 10 won't cut it. You have to go above and beyond four or five sets of 20, 25, uh, because you go from a state of not being able to use your limb to months and months later becoming a super athlete again, even stronger than you were before the injury. So Seth and I stayed in contact. We still stay in contact. He asked me back in June to do a uh, pride wad type uh, CrossFit workout for Pride Month, and he contacted me, and I did it for him right away. So, yeah, um, injuries come to territory. But, again, like Bret Hart said, you know, if Sam and I are going to get in the ring, it's going to be physical. But I'm not going to try to, you know, hurt Sam because uh, after the match, you know, we should feel like that. We just got out of a football game, you know, nothing where our nose was broke or any limbs are – messed up but it should feel like man I, I just feel like I got out of the football game but yeah to answer your question about uh you know you know Seth Rollins and his injury I had the same one and you know you know injuries come to territory these are scary those are I I have been a like I did a cross body one day at training off the rope and I I thought I did something scary to my knee, but it was just a bruise and I've been rehabbing it, like not rehabbing it, but like just taking care of it, making sure it's all good. It was, it, they're scary things because you never know what's going to happen with it. Sam, Sam, uh, you'll, you, you'll know, you'll know when your knee blows out on you. You'll know when your knee <laughs> or your elbow pops out of place because it's hot. It's a hot sensation that like, it's an electric shock. It's hot. It's like, you'll know. You'll know, oh. man. It's, and um, it's not a good feeling. So you're good. Fred, so we've been talking a lot about what you're doing now. I'd love to transition back to when you first started your career, uh, your first break on the main roster with the Nexus. We actually had Heath on the show, but I'd love to hear a different perspective um, of what you thought about that, being part of this, what would be a groundbreaking group. You know, uh, at there could be times in the business where you might mention wrestlers to me and uh, I might or might not roll my eyes like, oh, goodness, this guy <laughs> or whoever. I, I can't really name of anyone that's like that. But when you mention Heath, man, I just I, I just light up. I almost want to cry because Heath, Heath, when I first started FCW, when I first met him, he was like one of my first matches. In FCW, he had the long hair. Yeah. At the time, his form was busted, and um, uh, I was new. I just, I, I just got signed, so I'm going up to him. Hey, Heath, uh, I'm Fred. It's nice to meet you. What do you want to do? He big leagued me and big leagued me, and I still <laughs> bring that up still to this day. I said Heath, I remember when you big leagued me. Like he, he didn't get back to me. We barely planned some stuff. Couple hiccups in the ring, but no one would know except for us. Right. Uh, fast forward to the Nexus, he was one of my closest friends. I was cool with everyone in Nexus, but he was probably one of my closest friends. And I have a podcast, Pro and Bro Wrestling, and uh, I, I, he, I mean, he was the first guest um, that I had on from the Nexus. My goal is to get all the members of the Nexus on my podcast because I don't think that's ever been done. Uh, so he that might be a goal of mine guest. too, but you probably have more connections, so. 
Yeah, I mean, I tried, you know, you know, Wade Barrett, he's busy, right? Back, I right. did his podcast uh, years ago, but that's, you know, uh, that's the goal to have all the members on. But uh, Heath was the first one that I had on my podcast, and then Tarver, and then Gabriel. Mm. I was close with Tarver. But uh, Heath, um, I always say, from setting off fire alarms to hiding <laughs> under bleachers, We've done it all with the Nexus, and um, it was a fun experience, you know, whether people say, you know, oh, I wish you would have lasted longer, or I wish you guys would have won at SummerSlam. It is what it is. We had a great time doing the Nexus, and it's memories I'll always cherish. Should we have won at uh, the SummerSlam? Absolutely. But hey, life goes on. But yeah, my experience with Nexus was incredible. It's funny that you say that about uh, Heath, how you light up when you talk about Heath. I just met Heath, uh, I think it was in November. He was up on a show that I was in in Detroit. And he is one of the coolest, funniest guys I've ever met. He's He was just awesome. He's fun to talk to, and he's like, down to earth. It was a cool cool experience to meet him. And, you know, like, you know, wrestling is a masculine sport. We're in, like, uh, you don't hear a lot of guys say, oh, I love you to one another. He's one guy that he always says, Freddie, I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> and he means it. You know what I mean? He's not he, um, he's not faking it. He means it. And we still stay in contact. We probably talk uh, at once every couple of weeks. So, yeah, he, he's a good dude. That's so cool. Any uh, stories or memories that you distinctly remember that you or, or the other members of Nexus really enjoyed? Uh, during that run? Uh, well, with the Nexus, it was almost like, you know, expect the unexpected. Uh, you know, you know, some of the times you didn't know what, you know, what, what was going to happen. A lot of times we were told last minute what we were going to be doing. Um, but it was always nerve wracking for me and for all of us because we needed to deliver. I remember uh, when we uh, debuted on Raw, um, in Miami, Florida, we were told last minute what we were going to be doing. And I remember Vince Man saying that everything's got to look solid and, you know, solid, solid. Because if not solid, someone's going to lose their job, you know. So it was very important right. that we delivered that night. And, um, you know, just working with Vince, working with the legends, I, you know, it was just so much fun, you know. And I think WWE eventually learned maybe from their mistakes on handling us uh, when they ultimately brought in the shield. Um, mm -hmm. they, I think they learned from their mistakes in handling the Nexus. But yeah, I think all all the experiences, doing the run-ins at live events, working with Cena, it, it was all fun. It was all fun. Um, at the time, I was very shy. Out of all the members of the Nexus, I was always easy going, but always shy because again, I wasn't really my true self with the Nexus because I was still hiding. And uh, Wade Barrett would always say, uh, because um, just imagine there's seven guys beat, beating up on one person, you know? Yeah. Uh, Ryback is so big. Ryback would sometimes hit us by accident. And every time we would come to the back, Heath, Heath would be so upset. He would be like, man, Skit, man, <laughs> you, you know, you hitting us and you're supposed to be hitting the guy that we're on. So it, I mean, it was always nerve wracking. So Wade would always say, Hey guys, man, we got to let Darren get some stuff in, you know? So yeah, yeah. Uh, it was always cool. Uh, you know, Wade Barrett always looking out for me. And um, yeah, it's just, I think of those guys and it's funny, we're still in contact. We're still on a, a text, text thread, uh, still staying in contact. Wow. And, um, and I'm always randomly sending them disturbing memes. And they're like, where did that come from, Fred? I'm like, oh, I don't care. I just want to send it. That's so cool to hear as a, as a fan. But yeah, you guys definitely really did take advantage of a really cool opportunity um, and created something amazing. And Sam, so can you talk to me now about the natural Sam Beal? Because I want to know, clearly a very popular name in wrestling, a popular moniker. So can you tell me what makes you the natural? Well, you see, I'm a crock rocking, business in the front, party in the back kind of guy. <laughs> I'm just me. I, everything that I do outside of the ring and wrestling, it's just who I am as a character. I'm gonna. I, I like to win. I like eyes on me. Uh, 
I like creating my own legacy. I like going in there and just winning. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. like, I just, like I said, I like all eyes on me. I'm an attention grabber. And do you remember when you knew you were choosing the name, the natural? How did, how did that transpire? Actually, well, I've always ran with the name, the natural. And it wasn't until like I like I joined Skull and Bones where I started figuring out who I am in the ring, mm -hmm. and and like I always like I've always been the natural Sam Beal. Like I said, when I joined Skull and Bones, I'm, I'm starting to piece together who I am in the ring and outside the ring, and it's just coming together as one and mashing or mushing into me. I like to wear plaid. Plaid is oh awesome. okay. That's <laughs> the go-to. Fred, do you have any um, advice or, or memories when you were kind of forming the the Darren Young after the Nexus, when you were really, it seemed like you were coming into your own with the primetime players. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I felt like you, you guys really embodied who like their personalities really well. Yeah, it, it, it was when I got signed uh, with SCW, it was Dusty Rose that uh, always, always took a liking to me. Again, I was always shy anytime. He had promo class with Dusty. I always, I would be done with it. And in my mind, I would be like, oh, that was terrible, terrible. But Dusty always saw the best in me. He always lifted me up. And he's the one that gave me uh, the name Darren Young. And it was one of my best okay. friends years, years ago that uh, started calling me Mr. No Days Off. So I kind of just took that name, Mr. No Days Off and kind of made it my own. And I always say, not only am I missing no days off, anyone can be missing no days off. Living that lifestyle of constant grind, struggle, and just hustle. Um, so for me, um, you know, uh, again, with the Nexus, I wasn't really myself, but after that was all said and done, Vincent Mann saw, uh, took a liking to Titus O'Neil and I, and, it's funny, anything that sometimes happens backstage that's really good ultimately ends up on television. So then seeing Titus and I together after all the NXT shows, uh, he paired us up together. John Laurinaitis uh, signed us to SmackDown and then that's when we started rocking and rolling. With Titus O'Neil, I had joined FCW and then he had joined a couple months after, right, right off the football field. And there were some guys that didn't want to work with Titus because he was new. Uh, he's a big guy, 6'6", 270. Yeah. He's huge. Uh, he, he didn't know how to handle his size. So I, I was the first one there and the last one there at FCW working with Titus. And then fast forward to when we were on the main roster, we were paired together. And uh, it was it was something that I'll never forget being able to do primetime players with Titus, still primetime, still in contact with Titus. Um, and yeah, winning the championship titles was mo monumental for us. You know, we've awesome. been able to yeah. travel. We've been able to travel the world together and uh, we still stay in contact. And that's also really cool to hear that you and Titus still talk. I don't know why you wouldn't, but still it's, it's awesome that you're able to keep that relationship. Uh, and Sam, so you've won a few tag team championships yourself, right? Uh, yeah, actually, um, right when I got into the business with my uh, best friend, who I used to do the backyard wrestling with, we, uh, yeah. we kind of came in the same level and the same step. And we created a team called the Natural Aces, as my name was the Natural and his name is Ace Miles. So uh, we won three and we are the current champions in Fremont, Ohio at LPW. Uh, we've won three total tag team champions together and it's fun because we're, we're best friends doing what we love and being funny, silly, goofy, and still whooping ass when we get a chance. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But you're also a singles competitor as well, right? So which one do you think you prefer if you had to pick it's, one? It's tough. it's tough to say. I mean, I like to do my own thing because right now, I'm, like I said, I'm figuring out who I am in the ring and it's, fun i'm having a good time like yeah rocket bullet i have a permed mullet that's freaking funny <laughs> i love it. i i don't know i just like being me i guess and i i've always like i said earlier i like the attention on me i like having my spotlight a little bit so it's i i guess i would say singles competitor but i do love tag team wrestling it's fun that is fun as well yeah and fred i'm sure you have something to say to that because you went 
singles and tag team. What about you? Do you prefer a certain one or are you more inclined when you were with Titus or even the Nexus? Well, I've, I've done my thing as a group with the Nexus. I've done my thing as a tag team with Titus. Um, before my uh, career ended with WWE, um, I was uh, with Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund was my, um, my life coach and things were rocking and rolling with us. People started to take a liking to us, uh, but it's so unfortunate that the people that work under Vince McMahon didn't have my back. And it is what it is. It's the entertainment business. It's what I said earlier, Dr. Tom said, sometimes in this business, you're going to have to eat crap and like the taste of it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just, uh, um, I don't know how to, I don't know how to pinpoint it. Uh, when, you know, when I'm trying to say uh, that you, uh, you just have to be able to just find yourself and just be you, be you and stay true to yourself. Um, and that's what I do in the ring. I don't have to, you know, deepen my voice to sound, sound tough. I can just be me. And uh, again, I'm doing some of my best work right now. That's what I, that's what I think. Like I said, like you said, uh, <clears throat> be you. That's what I'm doing right now. It's, I've always been like in the past, I've always was like, Oh man, what am I going to say here? That's going to get a reaction. What am I going to do this to get a reaction? I'm just going to be me to a thousand. You know, it's the, the best advice I've gotten from my trainers is just turn yourself up a lot. You're a funny guy. Just be you. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. Exactly. And you embrace the mullet. I embrace the Afro. Uh, I get a lot of, you know, 2014, uh, probably the prime in my career. Uh, I had the Afro at the time, not being able to have a barber. Uh, my hair just grew out. So this is my pro and you, we have to embrace it. Oh, yeah. Love the mullet. Yeah. Yeah. Did that uh, resemble 2010? Darren Young at all with the the iconic, uh, I guess, was that a, a form of an afro? What you were rocking back then? Oh, uh, oh, the, like the spiky hair. Yeah, the stuff spiky like hair. That. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, it was a cross between looking like a troll and uh, <laughs> and buckweed. Uh, buckweed, buckweed, if you remember buckweed from years and years ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was actually at the time. It was uh, I was just doing crazy stuff with my hair, and it actually. Uh, some of my hair like from like relaxing it and straightening it up it actually uh some of my hair was falling out so it was just a mess uh okay it's not my favorite hairstyle the afro is probably one of my favorite ones because i always say uh you know uh, you know if your hair is nappy ain't nobody happy so ha having a fro having the pick at the time it's just me again turned up yeah. When it's one on one, I'm a shy, calm, cool, and collected guy. When the red light's on, I just turn it up. Of course. Uh, so, Sam, tell me a little bit about your goals. I know one of them is to wrestle in all 50 states, but do you want to go further than that? And can you tell me uh, where that came from? That that want to to go further? Um, like well, like you said, I want to wrestle in all 50 states. I have two big goals, obviously. One is to get a contract and make money off the business because this, this is my end goal. Like I, uh, I'm going to college right now at the University of Toledo. Uh, I studied being a teacher. Um, and okay. I'm actually placements at a school. And I was driving home one day from that and I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm like, dang, like this is awesome. And I love being a teacher. This is really cool but it's not, it's, it's not my call. Like, it's not my calling. My calling is performing in front of people. It is, it is being on the big stage. So I, I really, I have one saying that I tell like very limited people, but I'm going to tell you guys, it's, it's no longer a dream for me. It's a destination. I, I have to make it, I want to make it. It's everything in my, I'm going to do everything in my power to get there. Um, and I have a couple other goals. Uh, the one, one being, like I said earlier, I uh, uh, watch a lot of documentaries about wrestlers. I would love to have a legacy where somebody thought it was a cool legacy that they want to make it into a documentary and talk to me about some things, about my journey. So that's another goal for mine. But 
I, I like like I said, I just want to make it. And it it could be WWE, it could be anything. It could be AEW, it could be Impact, it could be any it could be anywhere, any place. I just I want to make it in wrestling. That's my goal. Of course, no, it's really inspiring, and I really I appreciate you saying that statement. It was a really well said one. And Fred, so speaking of, he wants to Sam wants to travel the fifty states and beyond. What are your favorite places that you have wrestled since you've traveled the world? Well, I've been blessed with WWE to probably wrestle in all fifty states. Uh, yeah. But my bucket list goal right now for twenty twenty one is to wrestle in Japan because. I've been able to wrestle all over the world, but anytime WWE toured Japan, I was either uh, on a different tour or not on tour at all. So 2021, I'm speaking it into existence that, yeah, I'm doing uh, New Japan strong American shows, uh, but ultimately I want to wrestle in Japan and it's going to happen. It's going to happen because you know, I've got that laser-like focus, that yeah. same drive and passion that I had back in 2009 when I got signed with WWE. That you know, uh, the the nervousness, the butterflies in the stomach, that uh, the good butterflies, that the the excitement that I had in 2009. I still had that going into 2021, and um, yeah, some of my favorite cities. Uh, probably one of them was probably. Uh, uh delhi india delhi india uh, i was able to ride the pyramids uh and oh, wow. and uh, i had uh probably one of the best matches of the night that no one will ever see uh it wasn't televised it was a live event best matches i've had was probably against dolph ziggler and we did have match of the night because i remember posting about it on my ig and i said um uh, uh, I said years, years ago that him and I definitely stole the show that night. And I'll probably never be able to see the footage again because, again, it was a live event. But, yeah. yeah, Delhi, India was probably one of my favorite cities to ride the camels and have the match of the night with Dolph Ziggler. That's awesome that you bring him up. He is all-time favorite. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, Dolph? Oh, uh, Dolph is my favorite. I everything that he's ever done i i watch it and i study it and i just i'm i'm a huge dolph ziggler fan i met him once in uh, at one of his comedy gigs and it was kind of like the only time in my life where i was starstruck i was like oh my goodness like this is this is the man right here i love dolph yeah Dol dolph's a great guy and if you're gonna study anyone that's your favorite definitely study him about the in-between stuff that he does the the way he looks, the way he sells, the in-between stuff to get into the moves. Definitely watch Dolph. It's funny, I was with his brother, uh, Ryan, um, and uh, we were doing this music video where uh, it involved a wrestling scene, but I was telling Ryan, Dolph's brother, uh, that, you know, I talked to uh, Ryan more than I did Dolph on the roster. And Dolph and I were always cool, but I don't think we would have a, I don't drink anymore, but I don't think we would have drinks or something back in the day. Uh, but he was always cool with me. We would always pass each other in the halls backstage with WWE because when you're with them, you pass the same people, you know, so many people to, uh, you know, production, the wrestlers backstage, you say hi to the same people all the time. And Dolph and I would always just give each other a look and just smile. Uh, but yeah, his um, his brother Ryan uh, is very like me, very calm, cool, and collected. And Dolph is the one that's uh, that's out there. And um, yeah, yeah, I love Dolph. Um, and one last uh, career specific question for you, Fred. So you touched upon it earlier um, with uh, Bob Backlund being replaced with you, and I thought that was the. I mean, the the gimmick itself, of course, was a parody of something also interesting that was happening at the time, but with Bob Backlund, how did that come about? Yeah, well, you know, again, tag teams don't last forever. And I knew when I was done teaming with Titus that you got to have a, uh, you know, a game plan, a plan B. And I've done autograph signings and appearances twice before I even teamed up with Bob Backlund. I'd done two appearances with him. One of them was the Special Olympics. 
uh, dealing with, you know, uh, kids with disabilities and adults with disabilities. So the one thing about Bob and I is that uh, anytime we do autograph signings, we like to do them standing because the sitting down, the up and down, up and down to take pictures with the fans, like it's just tiring. For me, I like to get up close and personal with the fans and I, I stand during the whole time. And before you know it, the time has passed passed by. So uh, we do our signing standing up. And I remember looking over at Bob Backlund, he's so energetic and I'm the opposite. And that same <laughs> opposite attract, like charges repel. If you're like, you'll probably not get along. But if you're opposite, you know, opposites attract. So I remember looking at Bob and I was like, man, after I'm done teaming with Titus, I'd like to have him like as my manager, maybe. And I said, hmm, life coach. And I remember again, after I was done teaming with Titus, I took the idea of Bob and I, I took it from Mike Tyson and his former trainer Cuss back in the day. So I wrote out the storyline. I had visuals of Mike Tyson and his trainer Cuss. And then I had a visual of Bob Backlund and myself that a friend had done up for me. And I proposed it to Vince McMahon. And I would say the most intimidating thing about Vince McMahon is his office door. Once you knock on his door and, you know, get in there and have a game plan, he's going to listen to you and you got to have that confidence. And I remember we talked for about 20 minutes uh, about the storyline that I proposed to him. And we had talked about yoga because he was asking me, man, Darren, how do you get such a big barrel chest? And I said, yoga. <laughs> He's like, really? I said, yeah, you know, it fixes your posture. You know, you go from doing yoga and your shoulders are like this. Yoga, yoga helps fix everything. Posture is very important. So he was very intrigued by that. And then he was very intrigued by uh, the storyline that I had written up. And he contacted Bob Backlund personally and said, would you want to do this uh, uh, do the storyline with Fred Darren and he, he he was on board with it and we started doing vignettes and uh, I, I, I'm always doing throwbacks and flashbacks to us um, getting great reactions from the crowd you know I remember pro my last feud was with The Miz and I remember on the Smackdown before we had our match at Battleground for the Intercontinental Championship I remember tapping him out and the place going crazy. And I always throw back flashbacks here and there. The people are going crazy. And like I said, I did my thing as a tag team, a group. Now I was finally getting over by myself. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's just unfortunate that the people that work under Vince Man didn't have my back. Um, mm -hmm. But I love, I, I love throwing that footage back because the people were finally behind me. And Bob and I still stay in contact. Uh, he's uh, he's the only guy that said that I can keep up with him in his squats and workouts, <laughs> which was very, very uh, surprising to me. Um, but yeah, we traveled together. I would do the driving and, and Bob was the type of guy that would like to drive by himself, but driving with me, he felt very safe. I would always say to Bob, hey, Bob, how's my drive? And he's like, oh, 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 right down the middle, right down the middle. Oh, he's very excited. That's so like, cool. Oh, oh. Yeah. So, yeah. No, and it's nice to see how much you did enjoy that. Can we expect to see you, do you think, back in WWE? Or do you more want to, like, try out your other routes first? I know you said Japan and NWA now. Well, you know, WWE was looking to have the Nexus come back. Ten-year reunion at WrestleMania. Uh, okay. They, uh, they had me coming back. They contacted me personally probably back in February uh, saying, oh, you know, we want to bring you back to do stuff for the network, uh, autograph signings for WrestleMania. So that could have probably been our opportunity to come back. And um, probably I was hearing probably be a part of that Bray Wyatt John Cena match. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, at, you know, at, um, at, at WrestleMania. But um, again, things happen. So that could have been an opportunity to come back, uh, but I can't hold my breath. Like my grandfather, 95 years old, always says to me, one monkey don't stop no show. So I had to keep it moving. And when New Japan opened up for me, uh, my family blessed me to be a part of it. And like I said, 2021, my goal is to wrestle in Japan and I'm going to do it. I love that. Okay, so then we will definitely keep our eyes open. But yeah, no, you're doing a lot of great stuff right now. Um, and Sam... 
So last question for you. Uh, what can we expect to see for the future of the natural Sam Beal? Um, <clears throat> expect to see me everywhere. You know, I'm going to get in cars. I'm going to drive to new places. I, I, a goal right now for me is I would love to wrestle for AAW in Chicago. That's one big goal for me. But I'm, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep grinding. Like, like Fred says, no days off, right? I'm going to keep yeah. working on getting better in the ring with uh, my fundamentals and everything like that, uh, developing a character. Um, I'm just going to keep driving. I, I, like I said, I'm going to make it. It's no longer a dream. It's a destination. I'm going to do it. So expect to expect to start hearing the natural Sam Beal on all over your all over your social medias and stuff like that. <laughs> no days off. The natural Sam Beal. Everyone, everyone can live the monarchy. No days off. The natural Sam Beal. Heck yeah! That's awesome. And uh, final question, Fred. Um, any you've offered tons of great advice, wisdom. Any more to send Sam off as he continues his career? Again, anytime you can get these opportunities to do a podcast or Zoom or whatever, um, you know, with WWE, for me, you need a permission to, you know, I have to keep it PG. I have family here. You need permission to wipe your butt with WWE. Uh, but after, but they've set me up for success. You know, I use their platform to elevate people so anytime you can get opportunities to do an interview big or small to share your story i always say don't die with the story and you tell it share your story because you never know who's going to listen you never know uh who's watching you know us being on this zoom you know if i somehow stumble upon you on social media i might look to see you know what you're doing oh man this guy's got something and i i'm always a huge believer in uh, watching people under me succeed. You know, I've got some of my closest friends signed, you know, two referees in WWE, Sean Bennett and uh, referee Danilo. Um, you guys probably don't know them, but they're referees. I was able to ultimately get them signed uh, because they had that it factor. They were hardworking. They, they wanted it so bad, you know, so I was able to help my friends out. So same thing with Sam. I might stumble upon him and be like, man, that guy's got something. I might contact someone and just, and that's just how it works. You know, it's all about yeah. word of mouth in this business. And I love seeing people that aren't really under me, but kind of, I want to see them succeed. I want to see them grow. There's room for everyone at the finish line. So again, like I said earlier, Sam, uh, take care of that body. You'll get all types of advice from people. And I don't want to, uh, you know, give you too much, but very important. I'm 37. How old are you? 22. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were 22, man. That's, that's a beautiful age. Take care of that body, man. Because when I turned 30, that's when I had my first major injury. So again, like I said earlier, injuries come with the territory, but take care of that body and keep doing and keep doing interviews, keep doing interviews, keep doing interviews, talking, repetition. For me, I'm a quiet, shy guy. So that's why I do my podcast, Pro and Bro Wrestling, because it's an outlet for me to talk, be comfortable talking. Uh, and it's therapy because I do it with my real life neighbor, who's a big wrestling fan, Arnold Telegarta. So to be able to do it with my friend and to be able to talk, it's got me a lot more comfortable at talking like I'm doing right now. Thank you. That's a, that, that is great advice. Because like, I mean, I do come, I come from a place where I do have struggles with talking. So it's, I, I do need to start working on that and getting better at that. And I like how you said it was therapeutic because it, it does help to like get your beliefs and your feelings and your thoughts that are stuck up here out. Because another thing that you said that has also did a light bulb to me was uh, a story you don't want to die with a story you want to tell it yeah we all yeah, have exactly. exactly bingo well you guys have both been amazing thank you so much for being here uh that'll finish us off for the show and i appreciate it very much anytime anytime thanks for having me thanks for having us on you know and stay in contact yeah definitely thank, thank you for having me and blessing me with this opportunity to meet fred fred 
It has been a pleasure. Blessed daddy. Booker Wooka man feel good. I tell my people and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare. Don't you dare miss online. Rewind. Recap. Relive. Oh, yeah.